okay let's talk about maternal pelvis the maternal pelvis is composed of four bones first one is the sacrum second is coccyx and two innominate bones okay each innominate bone is formed by the occlusion of three bones that is ilium ischium and pubis okay both innominate bones are joined to the sacrum at the sacroiliac joint and anteriorly these two innominate bones join at the level of pubic symphysis the this consists of fibrocartilage and the superior inferior pubic ligaments the later ligament it is frequently designated the arcuate ligament of the pubis the pelvis is conceptually divided into false and true components the false pelvis lies above the linea terminalis and the true pelvis is below the spinae the false pelvis and true pelvis the pelvic uh, pelvis cavity is divided into true and false pelvis the false pelvis is lies above the linea terminalis and the true pelvis is lie below the spinae the false pelvis is bounded posteriorly by the lumbar vertebra and laterally by the iliac fossa okay the false pelvis bounded posteriorly by the lumbar vertebra and laterally by the iliac fossa in front the boundary is formed by the lower portion of the anterior abdominal wall remember okay the true pelvis described by four imaginary planes okay remember the true pelvis is described by four imaginary planes the plane of the pelvic inlet that is superior strut a plane of pelvic outlet inferior strut then plane of mid pelvis the least pelvic that is called as a plane of least pelvic dimensions and the plane of greatest pelvic dimension has a no obstetric significance okay it is four imaginary plane pelvic inlet outlet mid pelvis that is least pelvic dimension and greatest pelvic dimension has no pelvic inlet these are the landmark of pelvic inlet this is the sacral promontory this one okay this sacral alla to the sacroiliac joint is 3 iliopectinian 9 iliopectinian line this is iliopectinian line 4 this is iliopectinian eminence 5 this is pectinian line 6 this pubic tubercle pubic tubercle is here 7 this pubic crest 8 this is pubic crest is 8 this is 9 pubic symphysis okay remember very very simple sacral promontory ala of sacrum sacroiliac joint okay iliopectinian line iliopubic eminence iliopectinian line then seven is pubic tubercle crest pubic spurs very very simple okay then pelvic inlet in inlet you have to remember three anterior posterior diameter that is true conjugate obstetric conjugate and diagonal conjugate true conjugate the dimension 11 cm obstetric conjugate 10 to 10.5 cm and the diagonal conjugate is 12 cm how we measure true conjugate it is from the uh, upper border of the pubic symphysis to the mid po mid point of the sacral promontory then this is the more mid uh, prominent uh, the the of true conjugate this is true conjugate the obstetric conjugate it is the distance from the uh, posterior um, eminence in the pubic posterior surface of the pubic symphysis from the to the mid point of the sacral promontory then lower border of the pubic symphysis to the mid point of the sacral promontory is the diagonal conjugate this is sacral promontory this is greater ischiatic foramen ischial spine sacrospinous ligament later lesser ischiatic foramen sacrotuberous ligament obturator foramen pubic symphysis pubis true conjugate obstetric conjugate diagonal conjugate ilium very very important things okay the transverse diameter is the distance between the farthest points on the iliopectinal lines that is 13.5 cm of the inlet oblique diameter is the distance between one side of sacroiliac joint to the other iliopectinal eminence that is 12 cm contracted pelvis is when the obstetric conjugate is less than 10 cm normal obstetric conjugate has to be dc that is diagonal conjugate minus 1.5 cm this is the anterior posterior or true conjugate diameters this is the left oblique diameter that is left or sacroiliac joint to the right iliopectinal eminence this is the transverse diameter the widest part of the brim from the farthest point in the iliopectinal eminence iliopectinal eminence 
interspinous diameter between the tips of the ischial spine this diameter of the cavity the pelvic cavity the pelvic cavity boundary the cavity has bounded the roof is by form of the plane of the pelvic brim the floor is formed by the plane of the least pelvic dimension the pelvic cavity has formed by the plane, roof is from the plane of the pelvic brim the floor is from the plane of pelvic uh, least pelvic dimension and anteriorly the shorter pimpus is pubis posteriorly by the sac longer sacrum pelvic cavity the plane of greatest dimension plane of least dimension the plane of greatest dimension the it is the plane this plane is passing between the the plane is passing through the between s2 uh, s3 and middle of the pubic symphysis middle of this middle laterally by the obturator foramen though this plane the plane of greatest pelvic dimension has no obstetric significance every time all diameters are equal are 12 centimeters there is no obstetric significance so plane of greatest dimension it is passing the this plane is passing between the s2 s3 junction and through the middle of the pubic symphysis and laterally bounded by the obturator foramen and all diameters are 12 centimeters no obstetric significance okay this plane of this pelvic dimension this this plane is passing between the s4 s5 junctions and it is the passing through the lower part of the pubic symphysis and laterally by the is crossing through the ischial spine internal rotation occur at this plane very very important this plane this if it is internal rotation is pale this is called as deep transverse rs smallest diameters by spinous diameter interspinous diameter that is 10 centimeter very very important diameter of pelvic dimension so remember the plane of greatest pelvic dimension plane of least pelvic dimension <clears throat> then uh, between uh, this uh, greatest is passing through S2 S3 junction and middle of the pubic symphysis and lateral with the for a that's all diameter 12 cm no obstetric significance least will be dimension it is passing between S4 S5 and lower part of the pubic symphysis and lateral with the ischial spine interlocation of this level if it is spelled the deep transfer RS happened okay smallest diameter is in interspinous bispinous diameter in between the two ischial spinous it is 10 cm and uh, contracted pelvis when you will call contracted pelvis already you told if it is offset conjugate is less than um, 10 centimeter it's called offset contracted pelvis if it is interstitial interspine spine, spine diameter less than 8 centimeter then it is called as contracted pelvis this is a plane of greatest pelvic dimensions plane of mid cavity mid pubis to jaw this primary is passing through the s2 s3 junctions to the mid the middle part of the pubic symphysis okay the plane of least pelvic dimension, the plane is passing through the S4 or S5 junctions and the lower part of the pubic symphysis and those through the ischial spine to end the sacrum. Very, very important S2, S3 junctions, this plane of greatest pelvic dimension, S4, S5 junctions and uh, this is plane of least pelvic dimension. Note that pelvic outlet plane, again the pelvic outlets has two part angle to each other. This is the sacrum, this is ala, this is ileum, ischial spine, pubic ramos, symphysis pubis. This is the transverse diameter between the farthest inlet. Transverse diameter inlet is 13.5 cm. Interstitial spinous diameter is 10 cm. Linear terminal is obstetric conjugate 10.5 cm. Anterior posterior diameter the mid pelvis is the posterior sagittal diameter of anterior posterior diameter of mid pelvis. The posterior sagittal diameter of uh, mid pelvis the distance between intersection of anterior posterior and transverse diameter and s4 s5 then again the pelvic outlet has two the pelvic outlet is one is anatomical outlet boundary and the one is obstetrical outlet boundaries the anatomical outlet boundary is uh, formed by the lower part of the pubic symphysis and pubic arch and ischial tuberosity and the sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligament and tip of the coccyx and the obstetric outlet boundary is formed by the, the roof is formed by the roof is formed by the plane of least pelvic dimensions and the floor is formed by the anatomical outlet anteriorly the lower part of the pubic symphysis posteriorly the coccyx laterally by the ischial spines okay remember very very important so uh, the outlet again divided into uh, anatomical outlet and obstetrical outlet the obstetrical outlet is lies between the uh, lies between the uh, least pelvic dimensions and the lower part of the pubic symphysis uh, anteriorly the this roof is by the plane of the least pelvic dimension and the obstetric outlet include the anatomical outlet the floor is by the anatomical outlet obstetric outlet then anatomical outlet okay
then pelvic outlet transverse diameter by tuberous diameter is 11 centimeter contracted is less than 8 so remember of OC 10 centimeter inter is interspinous diameter is just spine diameter less than 8 centimeter also contracted inter tuberous diameter is less than 8 centimeter also contracted very very important AP diameter posterior diameter diameter less 7 centimeter tip of sacrum to point of intersection between anterior posterior and transverse diameter so pelvic inlet and inlet has some diameter mid pelvis is diameter and outlet inlet has anterior posterior diagonal obstetry conjugate and posterior sagittal diameter obstetry is 10 more than should be more than 10.5 cm the transverse diameter is more than 13 cm posterior sagittal lateral is more than 4.5 cm in the mid pelvis there is plane of greatest and plane of least dimension plane of greatest diameter and anterior posterior diameter is more than 12.5 transverse diameter is more than 12.5 posterior sagittal diameter more than 4.5 cm plane of least diameter AP diameter is 12 cm, interspinous is 10.5 cm, posterior sagittal 4.5 cm. Outlet has AP diameter 11 cm, intertuberous diameter 11 cm, posterior sagittal is more than 4 cm. The Caldwell Molly classification Ganicard 12 is anthroid pelvis, anthroid pelvis and 20 pelvis. pelvis. So based on the uh, class 5 cavity and outlet, sacrosciatic notch in the gynecoid is wide and shallow. In anthropoid more wide and shallow in android very very important differentiation point narrow and deep platypoid slightly narrow and small okay sidewall it is everything is uh, in gynecoid sidewall is slightly divergent or straight everything or uh, other um, in android it is convergent rest is divergent and straight only remember in android everything is gallop narrow and deep uh, convergent it is all this are, sidewall is divergent pubic arc is carved in uh, gynecoid in anthropoid long and curve but in android long and straight and short and curve in platypoid so pubic angle is wide 85 degrees slightly narrow it is very narrow in android very wide in platypoid more than 90 degrees centigrade 90 degree by tuberous diameter is normal it's short in android normal and short in anthropoid and wide in platypoid very very important Sacros you have to measure the sacro uh, sacrosiatic notch side walls pubic arc pubic angle by tuberous diameter sacrosiatic notch in android is narrow and deep rest and shallow mostly narrow and small shallow white shallow inside wall is convergent in android rest and divergent pubic arc is curved and long curve and long straight straight in android sub pubic angle is narrow and uh, very wide in platypolar and wide is 85 big gynecoid by tuberous normal everything normal normal only short in android and wide in platypolar okay at the level of ischials in the plane of obstetric outlet, the plane of least pelvic dimension is at this level. Remember, the ischial spine is the plane of obstetric outlet. Plane of obstetric outlet is the plane of least pelvic dimension. Plane of obstetric outlet, no. Plane of least pelvic dimension. The roof is formed by the plane of least pelvic dimension. And the floor is formed by the plane of anatomical outlet. Okay. Then uh, the levator running muscles, the, uh, the, at the level of ischial spine, the levator running muscles situated at this level and ischio coccygeal part is attached to the ischial spine. So levator running muscle insertion, plane of obstetric outlet uh, is at this level, then obstetric axis, the obstetric axis, uh, the obstetric axis, the, the obstetric axis, the pelvis, obstetric axis, the pelvis started, start changing its direction from ischial spine only. The scope of carox is start changing from the ischial spine. Okay. The obstetric axis, the head is considered in case when the bolt is paired by zenally at or below this level. If bolt is paired at or below this level, this is called as engaged head. Vortex, vortex is paired generally. Internal rotation of the head occur when the hospital internal rotation occur at this level. If it is crossed below at or below this level, then it's head is called as engaged. The obstetric axis changes direction first. Levator only must insertion occur in this plane. In this level, the plane of obstetric outlet in at this level. Uh, insertion of levator only muscle, obstetric axis changes in direction, head is engaged at or below this level. Internal rotation occur at this level. Pudendal knob block is carried at this level. The external os of the cervix also located normally here. The vaginal vault is located nearly. The ring pessary should be applied above this level of the for treatment of prolapse. 